Hey everyone, today on Chemistry Cafe, I will be teaching you on how to name molecules in around 10 minutes. Hopefully you find this whistle stop tool useful and can use it to help with your studies, especially those studying A-level and first year undergraduate level. This video will cover some of the IUPAC rules of naming and will give you an idea of how to name straight and branch chain molecules, which may or may not have such two functional groups. You will also learn what happens when there's more than one functional group present and which takes priority. IUPAC, the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, devised a set of rules to allow chemists to understand each other's compounds and avoid confusion when sharing research on an international level. These rules can be applied to organic compounds, which are compounds of carbon excluding its common oxides. Carbon can form up to four bonds, which can either be with hydrogen atoms or other elements in function group. So now let's get on to the fun stuff. It starts with naming. So first, the longest carbon chain needs to be identified. With these compounds, it seems pretty obvious, but this will get more complicated once we start adding branches in. The prefix of each name indicates how many carbons are in the longest chain. Meth for one, F for two, and so on and so on. The suffix indicates what type of molecule it is. So in this case, it is A, telling us that the molecule is a hydrocarbon alkane. So it, it contains carbon and hydrogen atoms only, with no double bonds. Now, we can work out the structure of the compound by looking at the name and the name by looking at the compound. For example, if we look at the display formula for this compound, pentane, we can count that there are five carbons in the longest chain, so the prefix must be pent. And there are only hydrogen and carbon atoms and no double bonds, so the compound must be an alkane, given the suffix "-ain", and the overall compound name, pentane. Alternatively, if we take octane, for example, we can establish that there are eight carbons at atoms in the longest chain by the prefix oct and the ain suffix tells us the compound is an alkane hydrocarbon and so now we can draw the compound out octane. Functional groups can occur anywhere along the carbon chain in place of hydrogen. Here's a list of some common functional groups that you are likely to encounter frequently during your studies. When naming and drawing compound for functional groups, again start by identifying the longest carbon chain as well as identifying the type of functional group attached to the chain. Where there's just one functional group attached to the chain, the functional group name forms the suffix of the compound name. Each functional group has a specific suffix, for example, alkyls and slash hydroxyls are O's and chiocytic acids are oic acid. Let's take butanol for example. We can see that there's a full carbon in this longest chain which gives but, and the OH group attached to the end of the chain indicates that it is a hydroxy functional group, so the suffix will be O. This gives us the name butanol. If we are given the name propanone, we can establish that the longest carbon chain has three carbons in it, and there's also a ketone group. The ketone group has the formula C double bond O, which means it must be attached to a central carbon in order for each carbon to still have four bonds. The chain is only three carbons long, the ketone must go on a central carbon, giving us the structure. Now, now let's take a look at other examples and see if we can understand how the name matches the structure. So far, the examples we have seen have had functional group attached to the end carbon central in the case for propanone. But now, let's make things a little more complicated. The functional group can be attached to any carbon along the chain. When naming the, the compound, the carbons are numbered from one end of the chain to the other in the direction where the functional group is on the lowest numbered carbon. So for example, in this compound, dichlorobutane, if you're numbering the carbons from left, from the left, the halogen is on the third and the fourth carbon. But if we number them from the right, then the halogen is on the first and the second carbon. 1 and 2 are lower than 3 and 4, so the compound is named 1,2-dichlorobutane. Make sure to put a dash between numbers and letters when writing compound names. Sometimes a carbon has branches, which contain other carbon and hydrogen atoms. When naming these kinds of compounds, it is important to carefully identify the longest carbon chain, as it may be hidden in the branching. When there's more than one of the same group in the compound, the carbons are numbered from the end, which gives the lowest combination of numbers for which the, carb, the group function groups are attached to. Along with numbers, a prefix must be added to the name. When there is two of the same, di is put before the group name. When there's three of the same group, tri is used, and so on and so on. But now, let's carry on. For example, if we name the compound 2,4-dimethylpentane, because the longest carbon chain is pentane, and there are two methyl CH3 groups attached, it gives us dimethyl at carbons 2 and 4 which gives us 2,4-dimethylpentane. 
Remember to include a dash between numbers and words and also a comma between numbers. If we're given the name 135 trimethylbenzene, then we can work out that there are three methyl groups attached to the benzene ring at columns 1, 3, and 5, and so we form this structure. But we must also take into consideration that sometimes more than one group will be present in the compound. And so, how will we order these when naming the compound? Well, this can also apply to halogeno alkane, where the different substituent groups are named alphabetically, where any di, tri, etc., prefixes and numbers are ignored. Let's look at the compound 1 bromo 3 chlorobutane. We can see it has four carbon long chain, giving us butane. It also has a chlorine and a bromine attached to it on the more columns 1 and 3. Since the B becomes before C in the alphabet, bromine is listed as the first substituent. So that gives us the name 1 bromo 3 chlorobutane. Now, in our second example, 2 bromo 3 butophenol, the longest chain is a phenol, where, carbon, where the carbon with the OH is the carbon 1. But can you believe that there are even more rules you must consider? This one is for when there's more than one functional group attached. Some groups think that they are more important than others, so they can take priority over other groups. Carboxylic acids are like the king of functional groups, and they take the highest priority. The priority group takes the suffix of the compound's name, with the other groups taking the prefix, which includes the number of which includes the number of the carbon atom on which they occur. So if, so if a compound has two functional groups attached to it, then we have a family name which comes from the longest carbon chain. There is a suffix which comes from the highest priority group and the prefix which comes from the other functional group. This compound is named 4-hydroxypentanoic acid because it has a 5 carbon long chain giving us pent. And there is a carboxylic acid group which adds to the pent and forms the suffix of the name giving us pentanoic acid. But we can't just ignore the hydroxyl group. And so this forms the prefix giving us the name 4-hydroxypentanoic acid where the 4 comes from the position of the OH group on the carbon chain. Carbon 1 is the carbon attached to the highest priority group. If we take the name 3 oxybutanol, the family name tells us there's a 4 long carbon chain. The L indicates that there's an aldehyde group attached to it then, of the compound, and then to the third carbon away from this group is a ketone. Therefore, the overall structure looks like so. But you're probably wondering how on earth you are supposed to know which groups are more important than others. But no need to worry. Here's a list which explains the priority groups to get more familiar and more comfortable with the groups and their importance. And it will just start to come from memory. That is all folks. We've reached the end of our whistle stop tour. And so I hope you've got a better idea of how to name molecules now. So just so you both know that you understand what's been discussed in this video, I've included some questions so you can apply your newly found knowledge. If you have any topics you would like us to discuss in the next video, put them down in the comments below as well. And that's it for me. Good luck with your studies. And don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Thank you very much and goodbye.